Hey, this is the first devlog of a little Roblox RPG project that I just started. Kind of just winging it with this, but thought I'd record what I've made so far. So I've got this little area set up. You can see some UI stuff. Um, there's a health bar here and a charge bar, as well as MP, which is something I have planned for the future, um, as well as just a couple save and reset data. The first thing I did when I started this project was get a saving system working and took a lot of learning. I had to learn how tables work in Lua and how the whole Roblox data store system works, but managed to get it figured out. So now the game will automatically save when you leave and reload your data when you return. So that's pretty cool. And I got some buttons up here to manually do it for testing and stuff. So today I was doing a lot of work. I got a battle system sort of up and running yesterday. And today I was trying to get random encounters to work and there were a bunch of different bugs to fix, but I think I have a super rudimentary system working now. So this here is a little patch of tall grass. And if I go into it and just stand there, nothing's gonna happen. And what this tall grass does is at regular intervals, it checks to see if there are any players who are currently mo actively moving around within the tall grass. So if you're standing still, you're not gonna get any encounters, but if you're moving around, then at each of those intervals, it's going to attempt to give you an encounter, and there's only a chance that you'll actually get one. So you'll have to like move around a bit, and it's a little random. So it's a bit of a workaround solution, um, but it seems to work just fine. So if I move around a bit, I'll eventually get an encounter like this. And this is just my temporary battle screen that I came up with. So you've got the enemy stats over here, player stats over here. Um, this has taken me a long time to get set up because I wanted to future-proof it. Um, one of the next things that I want to do pretty soon is a PvP battles at a designated PvP arena. So I've been setting up the battle to work with PvP, and like figuring out all the server client stuff was really tricky, but basically all of the UI is going to be in like animations and sounds and stuff are going to be handled on the client, but everything else is going to be handled on the server. So this battle is running on the server, and then it's just telling the different clients who are connected to it what's going on. In this case, it's just me in the server because I'm just fighting a CPU enemy. But if it was a player versus a player, then it would be communicating with both players' clients to update each of their stats and show the correct animations. And it gets a little bit complicated, but I'm happy I managed to figure it out. So I have a couple of attacks here. This is actually a scrolling section here. There's only two attacks, so it doesn't scroll right now. But if there were more, there would be like a scroll bar. And I actually had to do a little tinkering around to get it to work because I want this UI to be scalable depending on what your, no matter what your screen's like aspect ratio is. That way it can work on just about any device. And getting the relative scaling stuff to work with scrolling panes is kind of a pain, but I got it working. So I've got this little section here. There's two attacks I have. Basic attack just does a single damage. Charged attack does, it consumes one charge and does two damage. And I'm just going to do a basic attack. There's no animations or sounds right now. It's all very bare bones. I want to try to make sure that the battle system itself is working before I start adding more cool stuff onto it. So let me do a charged attack. And you can see it decreases my charge meter up there and my charge right here. And just to show off the saving, if I were to say stop the game here. And then load it back up again. You'll see that I've still got the same stats because it saved. And it, I think it does actually also save your stats when you're in the middle of a battle. So if you, like, leave mid-battle, you'll still be stuck with whatever damage that you took, um, presumably. I can actually try that really quick. I should probably test that. Alright, I'm going to do a basic attack. Worm takes the damage. Worm uses basic attack. I take a damage. Stop the game. Start it again. And you can see I still have that damage that I took. So you can't, like, cheese your way out of a battle by leaving the game. Um, the way the saving works is the player's data is stored on a Roblox data store in just a single table, and that can have, like, sub-tables. So right now it's just a table that contains a table for the player's stats, but I'm going to have additional tables for other things, like items in the player's inventory, if I can figure out how to make that work, um, and other things. And then what it does is when you load in, it sends all that data to the server, and the server sort of holds on to your data, and that is where it is, like, pulled from and manipulated, so it's not constantly accessing and saving to a data store. And then when you leave the game, it saves all that data on the server up to the data store. When I was first starting out messing with data stores, I kept trying to I was trying to save the player's data on their client, and that did not work because the moment the player disconnected, that save data was gone and the server couldn't save it. So 
had to learn that the hard way, but anyway. I'm going to see if I can get the other enemy to appear. Here we go, Super Worm. This one's got some higher stats and it has some charge, so it can actually use the charged attack as well. So it's using basic attack here, and every enemy... Um, I've got a system set up, so every enemy will have a simple AI script attached to them. So the basic worm, it'll just always use basic attack. And the super worm has a 50-50 chance to either use basic attack or charged attack. However, it'll only use charged attack if it has the charge to use it. If it doesn't have any charge, then it'll always just use basic attack. So every enemy I can give like a unique script to specify like when they use certain moves and what conditions for using certain moves. So it gives me a little flexibility. My ultimate goal is to try to make this as flexible as possible so it's very easy to like add new moves and add new enemies and other things to the game without having to like hard code all of them in. And then maybe even release some of this stuff as a kit or something way long down the line. I don't know if I will or not yet because I would want to have the whole thing finished first and I don't know if or when I'll ever do that. Let me just use a charged attack really quick, take down a couple health. So currently, if you lose the battle, I just have it fully heal the player, because I'm just testing right now. I still haven't fully decided what will happen if the player loses a battle, if they'll get like sent back to spawn or something. I have an idea in mind for how to set up the world and stuff for this game. It was partly inspired by this game called Time Wasting Simulator, but I'm going to be taking it a bit of a different direction, like lore-wise and stuff. For now, though, this is about all I've got, just... You can walk around, get into random encounters with two different types of enemies. Let's see, if I pull up the Explorer properties and output again. And you can sort of see all the stuff I've got set up. Like, I'm trying to organize everything, so I've got all of my, like, different signals for communicating between the player and client organized. There's a folder for, like, instances of enemies, so when you get into a battle, it doesn't, like, modify the enemy's data that's, like, stored for reference it'll like create a copy of the enemy to modify its stats and stuff but here you've got like all my enemies set up and i can easily just like change all of their stats i can give them different battle actions to use and these are just references to the actions stored in here and they of course they have their little script which just determines how they act this took me quite a while to figure out but it is nice to have it done I'm trying to make my code as clean and organized as possible as well. I think I'm doing a pretty decent job of it. Like, this game manager here is, like, the main server script, but then it's got all these separate modules for different things, like battles and managing a player themselves and their data on the server or saving and loading player data to and from the data stores. All that stuff partitioned out into separate modules. Let's see. Of course, my actions up here, like, you've got their name and charge cost. And then in here, there's going to be a bunch of these different, like, tags, I guess, which will determine what the action does. And I actually have a template here. I've got, like, direct and indirect damage. So it's, like, direct damage is physical damage. Indirect damage would be, like, magic damage or something. That's going to be used for some mechanics later. But currently, I'm just using direct um, and once I start getting some like attack animate like damage animations or something, it can start having some distinction between direct and indirect damage. Currently, the battle system doesn't really uh, distinct between the two of them. But yeah, and you can damage the opponent both ways. You can damage the user of the attack both ways. So if you want there to be like recoil damage, and it can also be either direct or indirect. And I also have some options for either healing the user or healing the opponent. Again, trying to give myself a lot of flexibility there so I can do whatever I want with these things without having to, like, do a lot of coding to make them work. And there's going to be other things, too, like status effects. I kind of have some interesting ideas for status effects, too, which I'll probably get to. Um, and there's a lot of other mechanics. Like, I want to have an inventory system with items dropped from enemies and crafting. I want to have... I want to have each of the different actions you can take in battle have quick time events. Uh, some of this battle system was inspired by my recent playthrough of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door for the first time, so I'm keeping the stat numbers low and going to have, like, quick time events in the battles to successfully do your attack. It's going to be fairly straightforward because the way I've got it set up, I can't really do, like, multiple damage increments, like, over time. So it's basically just going to be you do a quick time event. If you don't succeed, it just does the normal thing, but if you do succeed, there's some benefit, whether it be doing extra damage or 
applying some sort of effect to the opponent or to yourself. Um, and then I also want to have mods. It'd be kind of the equi this game's equivalent of badges, but instead every player in this game will have like this funky, unique weapon thing that's part of like the world building or something, and you can modify it with all kinds of different weapon mods that cost mod points, which is what this up here will eventually be. It's currently just a static number. Um, and you can like equip and de-equip different ones, and depending on which ones you have installed, it can like result in different builds. And I'm also going to copy over the Paper Mario thing of like when you level up, you can either increase your health, your charge, or your mod points by a certain amount. And there's other stuff too, like I've got ideas for player versus player and like what counts, like maybe a ranking system for that and what counts as like a proper win. Um, but that's going to take a lot of finagling. Like I still got to work on the battle system and add systems in place for say if a player just leaves the game mid battle or if someone takes too long to do an action and is like AFK during a battle just to prevent it from effectively soft locking their opponent in place. But yeah. Right now, though, I'm just kind of winging it. I'm just working on whatever I feel like in the moment. So right now, I think my next thing will probably be either having your battle actions like turn dull when you're not able to use them, just so it's a clearer indication of when you can actually click those buttons, or working on the player versus player thing, which I think is another major thing that I want to get figured out early. Because if I can get that figured out, I already have the battle system mostly set up with it in mind, so I'm hoping that it won't be too much more work to get working, but... Other than that, that's just my progress right now. Um, hoping that I can do some more cool stuff with this game and maybe have something interesting to share. But for now, this is just a short little update on some what I've gotten so far. So thanks for watching. See you later.